My name is Aaron Moulton, and I'm the curator of the exhibition Theories on Forgetting at Gagosian Gallery, Beverly Hills. Theories on Forgetting is an exhibition about cultural memory. It explores this permutational space between personal and collective memory, a place where forgetting occurs. The layout of the exhibition is set up to illustrate this conversation between personal and collective memory consciousness. With the bedroom suggested in the first gallery, a location where the memory trace from the day is laid down and extraneous details fall away. And the other is the library, our culture's agreed inventory for everything we try hard to collect, reference, and emulate. Forgetting is a lingua franca across cultures and something that doesn't require explaining. We're all good at it, and yet we've never openly turned it into an art. Institutional forgetting occurs quite actively in culture as a means to polish an historical or current narrative. This exhibition focuses more on the passive kind of forgetting that we're less in control of, the one where references, images, and anecdotes slip or fade. The exhibition takes an anthropological approach to addressing forgetting by focusing on specific areas of interest or query. One group is what I would refer to as the fame cycle, where something comes from oblivion and is elevated to a status of everyday importance, Shifting from the 20th to the 21st century, we've become equally obsessed with the fall, however, seldom noticing the quiet return to oblivion. We see this in the iconoclastic work of Douglas Gordon. His treatment of Warhol's superstars show us people who, for many, are recognized almost exclusively through Warhol's image of them. Gordon takes this a level further by burning away this image and uh, revealing us beneath in the mirror. Christian Jankowski's film installation focuses on a Vatican-approved audition to select an actor for the role of Jesus, a character historically positioned as the human embodiment of divinity, often recognized through echoes, composite sketches, and culture's telephone game of historical interpretation. Our archival impulse is this important way in which we strive to collect, order, or reference elements from histories, both personal and collective, occasionally leaving our memory too relaxed to that said subject, which is now a swipe and click away. Mark Flood's logo paintings remind how pluralized perspectives of information and history have become, presenting them through an aesthetic of data corrosion, or bit rot. Reminding us of life before the internet's vast image bank, artist Taryn Simon presents depictions of the analog picture archives of the New York Public Library. Composed of clippings collected from magazines, the groups, created with formal and free associative criteria, become frame specimens of collective consciousness. A key query has been to imagine what forms without reference would look like. This echo chamber or feedback loop of our evolving cultural and visual narrative eventually obliterates references and precedents. In Dot PHG, Thomas Roof reanimates analog photography's most alchemical moment, the photogram. Through virtual means, Roof reimagines the photogram process, presenting elusive forms that go beyond cultures of reference. These images, through their complexity, prevent knowing how or from where such forms ever originated. Sterling Ruby's trough, a centerpiece in the exhibition, immediately reminds us of an archetypal resting place, an uncomfortable bed of beds. This form was created for a practical use within studio production, originally designed to catch urethane runoff from another body of work. Suddenly it emerged on its own as a sculptural possibility in itself. Another query is whether we have an appropriate expression to think about the antonym for nostalgia. Using the past as a raw and unsentimental material for production, the artificial biomes of artist Max Hooper Schneider are vitrines of cultural rubble. These alien taxonomies and out-of-place artifacts postdate humanity with a tropically lush and 22nd century take on modernity. The last category of interest is Los Angeles, home of the exhibition, and a place where, thanks to the blurred seasonality, every day is today. Ed Ruscha is the grandfather within this context and within the Los Angeles art scene as a whole. 
Presented with a whisper from their return to the elements, his rusty signs make corrosion look fresh as a blossom. By occupying this permutational zone of memory, the works and theories on forgetting communicate an aura of a cultural apparition or a lost reference. The exhibition resembles a museological survey of objects with source amnesia, an uncanny valley of foreign relics and personal figments that reveal the emergence of new languages fertilized by previous ones.